guys. Who are you? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, hey. Hey guys, Matt here again, coming at you from the lab in UCSD in La Jolla, California. And this is part two of the first video where I want to show how to do QRT PCR properly. So in that first video I showed how to isolate RNA and in the second video I want to show how we can determine whether or not uh, it's pure and whether or not it's good quality and also the concentration. And then I'm going to show how to actually do the reverse transcriptase reaction so we can get cDNA out of our RNA. So to determine the concentration and the purity of our RNA we first need to use a nano drop and it's a spectrophotometer where we can just put in one microliter of our sample and it'll spit out the absorbance and uh, nucleic acids and RNA in particular has its maximum absorbance at 260 nanometers so uh, we can use that spe that nano drop and figure that out which is what I'm going to do right now so the program for this one is nano drop 1000 and it's pretty common in most labs and that's it right there so first thing we want to click nucleic acid and it asks you to add a water sample clean water sample so I always use the water that I had used previously to uh, to dilute my RNA in that the last step that I did in the previous video so I'm going to load it here in the pedestal it's just one microliter Close it, hit OK. Okay. So then we want to hit the sample type as RNA, even though the sample, it would still spit out the same thing. And then we need to blank the instrument. So there's already some water in there that I, that I just used. And uh, it's clean, and it's the water that I used to dilute my RNA, so I'm just going to go ahead and click blank. Alright, so now we're ready to rock. And uh, what we do is just add one microliter of our sample to the pedestal. So I'm just going to remove it with Kim Wipe, the, uh, the water sample that was there. And then just flick the RNA sample a little bit so it mixes. and put it on the pedestal, close it, and hit measure. So then it's going to spit out where the absorbance is. OK. So our concentration is down here. 374 nanograms per microliter, which is very high for the application that I want. Uh, these two ratios are very important to determine how pure the RNA is, or the sample is. So we know that 260 is where the most absorbance is for the RNA, and there's also peaks. Protein absorbs at 280, and other chemicals in the triazole absorb at 230. So if these two numbers are under 2, we know that the sample isn't really that pure. So you want to get the, both these numbers as close to 2 as possible. For our purposes, for QRT PCR, these numbers are fine, but if you're going to do some sort of sequencing experiments, you'd want to have them both actually at 2. But if we wanted to increase the purity of these, we could actually just put in another mil of triazole into that sample and go through all of the steps that I described in the first video and we would be able to purify the sample a lot more that way um, if we needed to. But for our purposes this is okay and we can go ahead with the uh, the method to determine whether or not the RNA is intact which is actually a lot more important for QRT-PCR. So uh, to do that we need to run a nucleic acid gel so I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Okay, so rather than actually show you how to do the nucleic acid gel, I'm just going to describe it because every single lab has different size sets, different equipment to run the nucleic acid gel, so I'm just going to describe it. So what you need to do is you need to pour this gel. It's an agarose gel and you can do 1 to 1.5% agarose in a TAE buffer. you got to melt that agarose in the TAE using a microwave 
Uh, usually, depending on the volume, it can be up to three or four minutes in the microwave before it gets soluble. You need to add a volume of ophidium bromide in there, and usually that can be about 0.2 to 0.5 micrograms per mil of ophidium bromide in the, in the liquid gel. You swirl it around and then you pour that, and based on how many samples you have, you have to put the right comb in there. Okay, so then what you do is, after that gel is set, you put it in your rack, and you're going to want to load your RNA sample into that. So usually you want at least 200 nanograms of RNA so that you can see the product. And uh, what you do, so based on the concentration that we found out from the nanodrop, you're going to add that volume of your RNA sample to a volume of a DNA loading dye. And those are pretty common in the lab that you, you, you can find. And then what you want to do is you want to put that sample in one of the wells in your nucleic acid gel. And you're going to run that gel. And uh, it doesn't usually take too long. Just watch for the front to, to migrate down. And um, you can check it periodically to see that you're getting separation of your, of your bands. So the two bands that you're going to look at are these rRNA bands. And this is going to be indicative of how much degradation has happened. Ideally, what you want is your 28S band to be two times as bright as your 18S band. And if it is, then you know that your RNA is intact. If it's about one to one, there's been a little bit of degradation, um, but the RNA is still usable in that case, I'd say. If you don't see any bands, but instead you see a smear that's migrated further south, uh, that, that means the RNA has been degraded. So either some RNAs has got contaminated in, in the sample, and so they, they chewed up all the, the intact RNA, or, uh, or there was a problem in, in our maintenance or too much freeze-thaw cycles or something like that. So in that case, uh, there's not really much we can do. We have to throw it out and start again. But if we see those two bands and they're bright and looking good, then we can go on with our RT reaction, which I'm going to show you guys to right now. Okay, guys. So in the final part of this video, I'm going to show how we actually take the RNA and make cDNA out of it. And what you're going to need here is a thermocycler, which most labs have. They're all a little bit different, but you need that, as well as a kit to actually put the reagents in with the RNA to make the cDNA. So the kit that I like to use is this Applied Biosystems kit. Uh, high capacity cDNA reverse transcription kit. I really like this kit a lot because it's a one step kit. There's a lot of two step uh, RT kits out there where you need to make the mix, put it on the thermocycle, then add another reagent after 10 minutes. And uh, this kit, you don't need to do that, so it makes it really easy. So I'm going to show first how I set up my, uh, my samples as well as the master mix, just so you have an idea. Um, so I have my, my samples here listed in an Excel spreadsheet, and I also wrote down their concentrations. The, the next column shows the amount of volume I need for 250 nanograms of RNA. Uh, I picked 250 because that's worked well for me in the past. Some kits have a higher requirement for the amount of RNA you need, but I know with this kit, 250 works well. So because our concentration's in nanograms per microliter, I can just divide 250 by that value and I'll get the amount of microliters I need for that much RNA. I have In the next column I have uh, the amount of water I need per sample and that's because this is a 2x kit so the master mix I make is going to be two times stronger than I need so I have to double the volume in order to not to have the appropriate concentrated reagents for the amount of RNA I have. So that volume will bring the total volume up to 10 microliters so to have double that for the master mix, I make sure that I have 10 microliters of that mix to add to each sample. So on the other side here, I have the amount of reaction master mix that I need to make. And this you can all get online on the Applied Biosystems website. But uh, so here's the amount that the website tells me to put in for each reaction. For all the, the RT buffer, the DNTPs, the random primers, and the RT enzyme itself. So I just multiply all of these by the number of samples I have, and in that way I can pipette all of it into one single mix, and then I'll just need to add from that mix 10 microliters to each sample. 
So at this step, you want to make sure that there's no contamination of your reagents. And uh, in order for us to, cr to control for this, we have a no template control. So that's a control sample where we just add water and none of our, no RNA at all, but we also add all of the reagents that we used in every other mix. So we're going to expect to get a really high CT value from that, and uh, in that way it'll show that we have no contamination. So once I pipette all of my RNA as well as the master mix, I'm going to go to the thermocycler and run it with the program that you can also find on the website. And I'll just read it off to you guys. Uh, 25 degrees for 10 minutes, 37 degrees for 120 minutes, 85 degrees for 5 seconds, and then 4 degrees until you're ready to take the samples and use them. So, uh, yeah, that wraps up this video. I'm just going to get pipetting here so I can get out of the lab on time. And in the last video, I'm going to show how I actually make the QPCR reaction, set up the plates and get it going. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and see you next time.